Good morning, everyone. My name's Terry Nolan. Um, it's great to be back home, or what was my home for nearly four years in the early mid-80s uh, as a PhD student in Epi and Biostats. Um, for those of you who will be uh, at the dinner tonight, I'll say more about that journey uh, in, a, uh, in a lighter way, but it does overlap with um, some of the messages that I wanted to convey uh, in this session this morning, uh, which is the place of, of public health um, in an academic setting and what its implications are for, uh, for the community in which it's embedded. And as we anticipated our dinner discussion last night, uh, we were going to converge on, um, uh, on the themes of, uh, of the different speakers. So you're going to get more repetition potentially in, uh, in what we're saying. So I'm going to avoid um, some of the excellent points that have been made by my predecessors this morning. Uh, I want to make a few fundamental points um, after I just explain briefly uh, the history of what happened with me having left uh, to return to Australia in 1986. Uh, it took me 15 years to persuade my Dean of Medicine uh, from a medical school which had been established for about 150 years in Melbourne uh, and was a very strong, one of the strongest medical schools uh, in the world uh, with strong elements of public health that actually giving focus to public health was something worthwhile. Uh, one of the reasons that that happened was that um, there had been a review of public health uh, investment in Australian academic institutions in the late 90s and, and I had been asked because at the time as a paediatrician I was actually in the medical school uh, at, uh, at the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne and considered to be relatively independent. Um, and that review um, was of a program that had been initiated following a recommendation by a Canadian. Um, Kerr White, who, although he spent most of his career in the US, was born in Winnipeg, is actually an alumnus of this medical school. Uh, he had a profound influence in Australia um, when he was asked by the then Prime Minister in 1985 to review a number of elements of public health infrastructure, leading to significant investment by the health department, federally, in the academic institutions in Australia to actually fortify the development of academic public health. A number of other things also flowed from his recommendations. But the review of that program, which I was involved with, was, was critical of a number of universities for not actually uh, investing sufficiently in the way in which they had organised uh, public health. And my dean uh, was one uh, who was at the time also chair of the National Health and Medical Research Council, was embarrassed by this, and it led to uh, his um, determination to establish a School of Public Health at Melbourne, into which I was um, eventually um, uh, appointed as its founding director. And over the last 15 years now that we've been in existence, there's been uh, a substantial increase in the act academic activity, in the training of students, and a range of other things that there isn't time this morning to go into. But it's been, um, by any measure, uh, a profound success and a success which is celebrated by the medical school, uh, who, uh, which is now our sister in a, in a broad health faculty. And, and that success, I think, uh, brings uh, lessons for all of us about how to um, actually uh, uh, take advantage of what the uh, Jim and a number of others have mentioned today, which is the, re the realisation around the world of the importance of public health as an organised entity. Now, of course, that doesn't mean universities run public health within our societies, of course not. The interface between uh, what happens with governments, with the research uh, uh, and development enterprise, which they themselves should be responsible for, uh, with research institutes, uh, with industry, with a number of others that also have uh, an impact and, and, and responsibility within public health. The place of an academic institution there is to contribute to the research enterprise, it's to contribute to the training and professional development of that workforce, which across those range of industries and communities is important to actually move that uh, enterprise forward. And so that's what we've been trying to do. What that means, and a number of the previous speakers mentioned this, is that an academic entity has to be deeply engaged within the community that it serves. And that community isn't just government. Uh, it's the private sector, uh, it's the healthcare system, whether it's government funded or privately funded, it's industry, uh, it's the manufacturers of vaccines or drugs or other things that have implications for, uh, for public health. 
And the discipline, strength, the rigor, the science behind all of that, that is where the core uh, is that we have to contribute, both in terms of the research um, and its methodology and also the training. So providing a high level um, of professional competence and skill for a modern public health workforce. Much of that public health workforce is, unlike medicine, not defined as someone who is a public health worker, but people who are working in all of these different uh, workplaces and, and industries who need public health skills to do their job. But they may not be called a public health professional. And that's why an MPH, I think, will always struggle to be identified as a professional workplace degree for many of these workplaces, unlike an MD, which is a, a signal um, qualification for, uh, for a doctor. There are no problems with accreditation and so forth about that. But uh, with respect to the public health workplace, it's a bit different. For us, our MPH, which, um, uh, as is the case with most modern schools of public health around the world, is our flagship degree, we, we too have had very large growth in enrolments in our MPH. And we've re-engineered that MPH to modernise it and make it more contemporary with what the needs of, uh, of the workplace are. We've also, uh, one of my main messages, and I'll come back to this tonight in my presentation, is the importance of seeing medicine not uh, as um, a competitor in uh, what public health is doing, but a very important ally. And again, I return to Kerr White and some of his main messages as he, uh, in his very rich 97-year-long um, life, um, uh, kept returning to, which is that the engagement of public health in the mainstream of medicine is fundamentally important. That if we marginalise public health and for it to be seen either politically, socially or scientifically as something which is a peripheral activity, we will never be in the game. So in order to actually have the impact that we believe is important, which uh, uh, reflects on the pillars of public health that others have mentioned this morning, pillars that relate to prevention, to health equity uh, and to efficiency of resource allocation within society, to recognising what the social determinants of health and health outcomes are um, in the way in which we organise ourselves and our, and our uh, services within, uh, within society. These are the fundamental uh, elements of, uh, of what public health is. For the future, uh, the, the, the challenges that we face now, um, these have been alluded to in part this morning, um, and there aren't easy answers to these because we're all struggling with the technology impacts of uh, science and what it's doing because they have implications, enormous implications for how we in public health and the public health sciences and also in the training um, organise ourselves. So these relate to, for example, the challenges of modern genomics and how that relates to both healthcare and healthcare delivery but also to discovery, to causality, to the way in which uh, evaluation occurs, clinical trials that relate to modern understanding of specific genetic determinants of outcome. This is uh, in particular a major challenge for clinical trials. The whole issue of so-called personalised personalize medicine or precision medicine um, and what my colleagues prefer to call precision public health uh, is something too which we're really trying to come to grips with about how we're going to use this information. Uh, in delivering health services, what, the, what are the ethical implications of this, what are the fundamental financial implications of health service delivery, efficiency and equity. Um, more broadly, uh, others have mentioned big data. So the analytic uh, methodologies that are required to actually exploit big data are uh, really only at the beginning of understanding this. The infatuation with data is enormous and my medical colleagues who are drowning in their own data at the moment are really beginning to realise that dissecting signal from noise is something which is fundamentally important. So methods that understand this, that can deal with the genetic family and other implications for um, tweaking, if you like, the relationships between genes and environment, fundamental questions of causality over time are actually much more challenging now than they ever were, although the data that are available to help us answer these questions are uh, fantastic. And finally, I'd simply make the point that, um, and particularly looking and hearing the discussion from the University of Montreal as well as McGill in this city and, and the other universities in Montreal, it's the same in many of the big cities and the explosion of schools of public health uh, in the US and around the world. Um, 
the best centres don't have to do everything. They don't have to do everything well. But they do need to do some things well, and they do need to um, organise themselves in collaborations which actually uh, recognise that both locally, uh, in cities, in large cities like Montreal, uh, in ways which are collaborative, but which, in the way in which our systems work, will always be competitive, I suspect. But um, understanding that we don't have to have the best of every single element of that rich range of disciplines and activities that, that are in the public health uh, portfolio, if you like. And finally, um, in terms of the globalisation comments that were made by Howard and others, especially for us in Australia, um, our need to engage because of our remoteness is fundamental to our DNA. And uh, we, uh, particularly for the Asia Pacific and South Asia with India, China, and uh, Asia Pacific nations, Indonesia and so on, is fundamental to both um, our uh, cultural thinking, our, our population, the way in which the recent migration waves uh, are changing our society as well. These have fundamental implications for public health, for the way in which we as global citizens have responsibilities to engage with our neighbours in what we do to, invent, to advance uh, public health globally. And that too must be an element of a modern school of public health. So thank you very much. Thank you.